Hey everybody, welcome back to String and Story. My name is Holly Ann Knight and it's my job to guide you to quilt and to live with confidence. Welcome to Behind My Sewing Machine. I'm really excited today because we are talking about basic ruler work on your domestic machine. And I'm gonna do a demo and answer some questions for you guys today, okay? Um, while you guys are hopping on, let me make sure that I can pull up this video. And the reason I have you turned around and sitting over here with me is because as we get going, I'm actually gonna scoot you closer and make sure that you can see up under my needle, which is one of my favorite things and something that we haven't done in a long time on a live video. So this is gonna be great fun. Hey, hey, Terry. All right, so quick overview of the caption. You'll see first up today's blog, I've got some tips and tricks and uh, just general advice for getting started with ruler work on your domestic machine for you in the blog today. Uh, then the question of the week, I want to know your questions about domestic machine quilting. Uh, obviously, ruler work is kind of the top a topic today, but if you have other burning questions that you haven't had answered yet, I encourage you to be dropping those in the comments. And by asking your questions today, I'm totally bribing you guys to be engaged and ask questions. Um, one of our wonderful sponsors, Make Modern Magazine, is sponsoring today's giveaway. So by engaging and asking those questions about domestic machine quilting, you will be entered to win uh, your very own six month subscription to Make Modern Magazine, which is very exciting. That subscription, by the way, um, will start in July. So the newest edition of Make Modern Magazine, oh, excuse me, um, comes out tomorrow. And keep an eye out. I'll be sharing a link to that. And there is a quilt like a rock star column in tomorrow's edition. Uh, but the six month subscription will start with the July uh, issue. Hello, everybody. Um, last week's winner was Cheryl Boutel. Please email me at stringandstory at gmail.com. You want a copy of the perfect fit pattern and I will send that over to you. And then of course I included a link to our summer stash busting lineup. Um, also, a lot of you have already finished your first finish along project, which I am very, very impressed with. Um, this that we will be quilting on today is my first commitment to get finished. So I have a lot of motivation to be here and working on it, all right? Let me greet you guys and wind a bobbin at the same time, okay? Now, I'm really excited to be sharing uh, this information with you guys today because a couple of months ago, y'all started asking lots of questions about ruler work on the domestic, and truth be told, I don't have a ton of experience with it. I am by no means an expert. I'm simply sharing with you today what I do know, right? And it's enough to get us all started. And I also know that the most important thing is practice, and so as you can imagine, that will be my big encouragement today. Come on. All right, you get that winding. Oh, I had a bobbin in there, but it didn't have a lot of thread left. And I figured it'd be better to wind our bobbin at the beginning than get stuck doing it at the end. All right, good morning, Terry. Good morning, uh, Francie Jo. Good morning, Sue Marie. Good morning, Loretta. Good morning, Winifred, Tina, Jan, Sandy, Lydia, Karen, Sue. Oh my gosh, it's snowing again. It is May. Sue, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Oh, I'm so excited, Lydia. Hey, hey, Sandy. Oh, there's a whole bunch of you here. I'm so excited. I'm excited to get going. So, y'all, let me see if I can hold this up without dropping the computer on the floor or any of those things. I have been hard at work. I don't know how many of y'all follow my Instagram and Facebook stories, but yesterday I took you through a day in the life of an entrepreneur and uh, literally put up stories every 30 minutes to an hour all day long to give you guys an idea of what it's like to be an entrepreneur and to have a business and to be working on the things. So if you watched that yesterday, then you know that I spent a ridiculous amount of time quilting. I'm trying to get this up over here without it ending up under my needle, which I'm not sure if I'm gonna be successful. We'll see, here we go, okay. So I spent a ridiculous amount of time quilting these flying geese. And then quilting these, I never did come up with a satisfactory answer to what this is called. It's something like a monkey wrench, but it's not quite a monkey wrench. It's a lot, it's a bit of a conglomeration block, if you will. If you have a good, wagon wheel is another name I found, but if you have a good name for that block, by the way, I would love to have it. Um, my Google search did not give me a satisfactorily uh, concrete answer, but anyway, I spent actually way more hours quilting yesterday than I typically do. It was an interesting day to bring you guys along for the ride because I think it makes it look like I quilt all the time. And while I do a lot of quilting, I did way more than usual yesterday. So I was up very, very late 
getting this all done because I wanted to be able to jump in with you guys today on this big wide border. So full disclosure, I have not done the skinny borders right before this wide border yet, but I used my homemade spray base and it seems quite secure. So I'm not too worried about it. I am going to quilt this wide border for y'all to see and then I will circle back to those skinny borders, which also works well because I haven't figured out what I want to quilt in them yet. All right, threading my machine. Let me check and see if y'all have any questions that have popped up. Um, hey, Rhoda. Hey, Deanna. Hey, Julie. Oh, Lydia, I'm glad you enjoyed that. And I may do it again at some point. I enjoyed sharing. I think it was fun just to, I mean, keep track of my day as well. It was fun for me to be able to see like, oh, look at all the things I do in a day. Because in theory, I know what I do in a day. I track it on paper. Um... But it was fun, like explaining it in video and giving that little, that little look-see. All right, we are in business, my dears. All right, this gorgeous red, by the way, is uh, Aurifil 2245. And the, the color you're seeing on camera does not do it justice. It is a really, really gorgeous color. All right, if you've got your own personal four and your daughter's memory quilt, does the top, that's like so exciting, Tina. I love it, I love it. Um, that is a great question, Terry. Oh, Sandy, I'm glad you enjoyed it too. Okay, so Terry asked, you always have to start in the middle of the quilt. You don't have to. I recommend it if you can, which obviously this was a medallion quilt, so it lent itself really well. I'm going to scoot you guys back a bit so you can start seeing what I'm doing. Just forgive me that you're going to be looking over my shoulder a little bit for the moment. Um, this was a medallion quilt, so of course that makes it a lot easier to quilt this one from the center out. I like quilting from the center out whenever I can because I find um, that my quilt has less, less shifting that way and I'm less likely to end up with kind of a cattywampus quilt by the end of it all. However, I know that that's not always super practical. If you're working on a traditional quilt that's set in rows, um, I recommend dividing the quilt into quadrants and working, um, so, you know, on a long arm, you would be working row, 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 top to bottom, right? Or if you had the quilt turned sideways, you'd be doing the same thing, but with your columns. If you're doing it on your domestic, I would divide the quilt into quadrants and do the same thing working from the center out. So row, 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 but then come back over here and do center out, row, row, row. So it just, in general, keeps the movement of your quilting away from the center it's just ends up a little bit more even. Um, but if you're like, that is just a mind bender to me. That's making me crazy. I just am not sure how to make that work. You do what works for you, right? Like nothing in free motion quilting is a hard and fast science. These are all just things that I find work best for me. And if you experiment and like something else better, do that. Okay. Wonderful question. Okay. Let's talk through real quick some of the important things you need for ruler work, all right? Now you're gonna see my foot up close here in a second, but it's um, a round metal foot with a bit of a wall to it, right? It's about a quarter of an inch tall, about a quarter of an inch across as well. This is called a ruler foot. It's a specially designed foot that's not gonna bump up over the edge of my ruler as I am quilting along, right? Now also speaking of rulers, it's very important to have a quilting ruler. You can see how thick this is. This is a quarter of an inch thick. Thinner rulers are dangerous, as are hopping feet, because what you're trying to avoid at all costs is your ruler ending up under your needle. You could break a needle, you could break the ruler, um, it could wreck your quilt, it could wreck your sewing machine. Like there's just a lot of things that could go wrong and things like breaking rulers and breaking needles are super dangerous. We don't need any shrapnel flying, okay? Um, so do not use your hopping foot for ruler work and do not use your rotary cutting ruler. So those are like the two most common risks. Okay, the other thing that you're going to need to do is experiment with the best orientation for you as you are working, right? Now, I'm working in a border today, so this would maybe be a little bit, you might have different preferences for working in borders versus working in the center of a quilt, right? I found when I was working in the center of the quilt on my dogwood blossoms, I tended to put the ruler under my right hand because of the way I was actually like driving the quilt a lot more to create curves, Whereas today I'm using this straight edge. Don't worry, you're going to get to see this up close in a minute. 
Um, but I'm doing switchbacks, which are a free motion quilting motif, but I'm using the ruler to help me space them more evenly and to create an actual straight line as I'm going on that long stretch of the, stri of the switchback. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this super well. Those aren't a real good example because they're small. I don't know if you've ever seen larger free-handed switchbacks, um, but it's real easy for them to end up just a little bit wobbly, okay? And this keeps everything real straight and smooth and it makes it look like you're super precise when really you're skilled with your ruler and it's a great little trick, okay? So my orientation for quilting in the middle of the quilt is to have the ruler under my right hand, but I'm finding so far that um, quilting in the borders it mimics much more like the way I use my ruler on my long arm. And so I prefer to have the quilt under, or the ruler under my left hand simply acting as a guide and I'm still doing a lot of the driving with my right hand, okay? But regardless, when you're working, and again, I'm gonna show you this actually moving here in a minute, um, you are exerting pressure down on this ruler. Some domestic rulers have a little knob so you can like hook your hand on them a little bit more. Um, but even so, you're pushing down because you're actually driving with that hand as well. That's the only way to keep things moving smoothly when you're on the domestic is to be using both hands with some pressure. Um, unless you have put in a lot of time and practice to be driving with one hand. It's not that I think that that's impossible, uh, but because if you're like me, you're most likely used to driving that quilt around with one hand under your machine or with two hands under your machine, you're gonna do the same thing with your ruler. You're just adding a ruler between your hand and the quilt and guiding the foot along it, okay? So yeah, I saw a couple of interesting things. Eee! Yikes, Winifred! That's, that's terrifying, Winifred. I hope you found that foot too. Mmm, yuck. Exactly, so please, please, please use the correct foot so that you are safe, okay? Also, I do use my quilting gloves, but I'm finding that I only use it on the one hand that's on the quilt and not so much on the quilt or on the hand that's on the ruler. I have no explanation for that other than it's what feels natural. And so I'm going with it. All right. Now for me, what I'm doing right now is I'm simply going to make sure that this whole big old quilt is sitting on the table. You notice it had fallen. I'm actually going to go around and move some of it. You notice it had fallen. And I don't want the weight of it dragging off the edge of the table. So I'm arranging my quilt since I'm doing this edge. So the whole quilt is back here behind my machine and this is holding the weight. So all I'm moving around is this little edge down here because I want to reduce, you're going to be using all these little muscles through your elbow to hold that ruler down and move the quilt. Um, but I don't want to be having to strain them any more than is just unavoidable, right? You can end up with a sore elbow real quick. So. I'm making sure that I'm not dragging around a whole quilt is gonna be part of that success. Now for me, this ruler, this is Natalia Bonner from Peace and Quilt, her four-in-one ruler. I talk about it basically every time I talk about rulers because I love it. Um, there is a link to it in the top of this week's blog post. You will see um, Amazon links there to this ruler and also to quilting gloves, um, which I need to add a link for a ruler foot now that I think about it, but there is already a link for this. And it has these lovely quarter inch lines on it. So I am using the first line from the needle to the edge of your ruler foot is generally about a quarter of an inch. Um, so then I'm doing from the edge of my ruler to the, the first line is another quarter inch. So when I use those two in conjunction, I'm landing these switchbacks about a half an inch apart um, and keeping them fairly even. Now, I'm still learning. So these are not perfectly even. And so you're gonna see some of that uh, natural variation, if you will, but you'll also, I think, be able to see how much smoother they are than they would be if I was not using a ruler, okay? Hey, Lori, hey, Lynn. Um, it's reversed, Debbie, though I do often uh, <laughs> get my right and left mixed up. I'm using the selfie camera, so this is my right hand, but I know it's reversed the way that you guys are looking at it. I'm sorry, that's probably really confusing. Um, to just mentally picture it the other way, all right? In fact, you know what? Do I have the ability? Oh, I do, hang on. I'm gonna flip you guys around. Y'all are gonna get to see the door for a second. This is really, for those of you that are used to the mirror image, this is gonna be a brain twister. But I'm actually gonna flip you guys around the right way to see under my needle because I want you to be able to picture 
how this looks when you're quilting, okay? <clears throat> now, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the stitching, okay? But I want you to be able to see where my hands are so you get an idea of how I position myself, okay? I've got my thread tails here from my new bobbin. Now, I have lined up that first line on my previous line of stitching. I always hold my um, tails with my thumb a little bit when I'm getting started just to make sure nothing snags or moves around. So I'm using the ruler up until about a quarter to a half an inch away um, from the top of my uh, border here. And then I'm gonna continue holding the ruler, but I'm focused on making that curve of the switch back. Pause and make sure I've lined up my ruler to go back down the other way and go back down the other way. Now, this takes a little bit of elbow grease and you can see I'm going fairly slowly. And as I get into a groove, I'll be able to go a little bit faster, but it's better to go a little slow and have it look real nice, right? Now y'all keep those questions coming in the comments and I will glance over there and I will answer them as I am quilting. And here after a little bit, I will pop this out from under the needle and actually show you the lines that we're making a little bit closer because they're gonna be difficult to see right now. Oh good, I'm so glad you like it switched around. Yay, yay, yay. Um, it's a whole lot easier to do it when I'm actually quilting to have it switched around than the other way <laughs> when I'm talking to the camera. But this will make it more useful for seeing where to put your hands. So see, I'm just using the tips of my fingers to scooch you that over. I've got my hand. Notice how far away my hand is from the needle, right? Like if something goes wrong, as much as I don't want to break either my needle or my foot or my needle or my ruler, I really, really, really don't want to hurt my hand. Okay. So I keep it nice and far away. And this also allows me to have the back half of my hand on the quilt and gives me a little bit of extra like grippiness back there. So that's where I'm exerting a lot of the force to be moving the quilt forward is with these muscles down the outside of my arm down to my hand with like the heel of my hand and then these fingers are simply holding the ruler steady. Now again, you may find, okay, so this one's gonna be a little bit further away and I'm not actually right up against my ruler because I looped too wide, that's okay. You may find that you prefer to hold your ruler um, more like this. I also, this is how I hold it when I'm doing it on the long arm because I need the ruler to stay super still while I'm moving the machine around. Um, but I found on the domestic that it slides just a little or, or has a bit more of a tendency to slide. I haven't had a lot of sliding issues, but it, it feels less secure than letting part of my hand hang off, okay? Now, I know y'all can't really see my shoulders at the moment, but I just did a posture check. It is more important than ever to keep tabs on your posture um, when you are quilting with a ruler. You're using a lot more force to move this quilt back and forth than you do even just with normal domestic machine quilting. And like for me, because I'm holding the ruler in my non-dominant hand, um, frankly, this is the physically weaker arm, okay? My ruler does not have grips on it. So it's just the pressure that's holding it in place. Another tip, and I want you guys to see this. Um, I'm keeping an eye. I'm keeping an eye on my computer over there, so I can try to make sure I've lined it up properly. Um, there's this straight line here, and so when I was starting out to make sure that my switchbacks were square, I um, oh good, you can see them. They're starting to come into the shadow. Um, I made sure I lined that up on the edge of this border to get started, so that these are they're already slightly off all over. Oh no, they aren't. Okay. Um, so I lined it up to basically make a T-square to get myself started. And once I got a couple, because I don't like to bump up against that curve too much. It's too easy to run off. But I did it for the first few to make sure I was starting nice and square. And now I can just line it up with the previous one and know that I'm not making cattywampus switchbacks down the side of my quilt, right? Um, 
My experience with grips on rulers in general has been less than ideal. I find that they catch on things and peel off and I don't like the sound they make when they move across fabric, which I know is like a totally stupid argument of like why I shouldn't have grips on my ruler, but it just like annoyed me. Um, so I tend not to use grips and just use pressure. And like I said, I'm not really having issues with it sliding around because I've got my hand, I'm driving the quilt with the heel of my hand and I'm driving the ruler with these two fingers. Does that make sense? So I'm doing two separate things with this hand. Um, and the heel of the hand, it's a lot easier to press down through that, like just the way that our anatomy is, than to be pressing through even like your palm. There's that nice handy little bone right there, right? Um, this is the Peace and Quilt 4-in-1 from Natalia Bonner, which you can actually, you might be able to read her URL there, but there's a link in the blog this week. You'll see there's an Amazon link at the top of the post. It's the four-in-one ruler, and yes, there are marks um, along the side. Can you, I hope you guys can see those. Maybe. Oh yes, they show up. Excellent. There's the video lag, so I don't know if I'm like lined up properly in front of that camera until... <laughs> Uh, until it's time to go. All right, let's see. There we go. Posture check once again. Now, I did swipe some past tense down the sides of my neck. I am way more likely to crunch my neck up when I'm using a ruler than when I'm doing regular quilting because it's still a new skill. Um, I tend to be a lot more tense when I'm doing something that's still pretty new to me and that I don't, I don't have my full confidence with yet. And so I put that past tense on so I have a nice cooling sensation down the sides of my neck and shoulders to remind me to pay attention to what I'm doing with that part of my body, okay? I've also got rosemary and wild orange going in the diffuser back there. I find that that's a magnificent combination for both focus and creativity. So it's like energizing without being too much. Now, I will say doing the ruler work, I am more thankful than ever that I use spray based on my quilts. Because you notice I only had to pull out that one pin. And it's nice to just be able to go. I've got another one coming up over here. But if there were a whole bunch of pins along here, um, or if this border was just like flapping free, that would be difficult. Because like part of the reason I'm able to get this so nice and flat is because it was basted nice and flat, right? And as I mentioned at the top, if you caught it, I haven't actually quilted these two skinny borders yet, but because of the way they're spray basted, um, I'm not too worried about there being too much puckering or anything there. Right, Natalia Bonner has fabulous rulers. Fabulous, fabulous. Oh, thank you, Lynn. Yes, 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 using the ruler to space. Okay, making sure I'm not missing any questions. Keep those questions coming, guys. All right, so reasons to use rulers when you are quilting or straight lines. Remember, the other way to make straight lines on your domestic is your walking foot. So if you have a very small throat space, and I mean, and I mean even smaller than average. So this would be um, doing borders on a domestic with like a five and a half inch throat space would be manageable. It would be difficult to do ruler work with an average size throat space in the center of a large quilt like this. Um, but you could probably do borders if you either have a nice quilting table or your machine is flush with your quilting surface, okay? It would be hard if you've got, you know, your regular machine bed that's raised up and you're trying to balance a ruler on that. All right, so you're going to want a nice flat quilting surface. If you don't have that, then I recommend your walking foot. Um, I love to mix free motion quilting motifs and straight line motifs or geometric motifs. I just think it creates such a beautiful effect. Um, it gives variety for your eyeball, and the straight line areas are great places for your eye to rest, especially if you're like me, and you tend to be all in favor of the paisleys and feathers, right? So I tend to be a little bit extra with my quilting motifs, hence why I spent a lot of time yesterday finishing the quilting on the main part of this quilt, because I was doing it all very custom. Um, I'm going to do a quick check to make sure that I'm still doing these nice and square. I, yep, I've gotten just a little bit off. Um, 
Where was I going with that? Oh, yes. So, but also, in addition to just the, the aesthetic nature of it or using, like I did with these um, flying geese, using the switchbacks to really push the background back so the geese are floating on the top. Straight lines, especially switchbacks or ruler-assisted switchbacks, are a wonderful way to handle any kind of puckery or... Um, like extra fabric. So if your borders are not, if they're a little friendly to get started, doing some nice piano key quilting, some ruler assisted switchbacks, anything that has this straight line out from the center of the quilt um, is a great way to ease in that extra fabric. Um, and if it's really, really wavy, and for whatever reason you're not wanting to actually take it off and put it back on, then you can actually very carefully fold and stitch right along the edge of that fold no one will ever be able to tell, okay? I've done that on a couple of um, antique quilts that I've finished for family members where the original piecer was a little friendly, but you can, like you can see here, so this is the actual seam of the border, but it looks just like that if you do have a lot of extra fabric that you're wanting to tuck in um, for your, uh, with your switchbacks. You'll just get a little, it just looks like a little seam, okay? So this is a great back pocket trick if you have trouble getting your borders very flat or if you find that maybe your border started out nice and flat but by the time you did all your machine quilting stuff got a little cattywampus and they're not as flat as they were right all right i see a couple of questions the westerly ruler foot package Ooh, that's exciting, Marley. Your chicken, just you spray based. So I put some pins in, Patricia. So they're mostly all pulled out now um, because I'm almost done quilting this. But yeah, I put quilts probably every, probably every 12 inches but or put pins. But I do still put a few in. And as you can see, I pin along the border because the borders tend to get the most handling as we're machine quilting. And those edges can have a tendency to start flipping up. And I like to make sure that they're nice and nice and secure. Sandy, I'm diffusing rosemary and wild orange in equal proportion. Yes, exactly. Make sure it's the right shape length. Oh, thank you, Debbie. Oh, yeah. Well, and Sandy, if you, or Susan, excuse me, if you only get one ruler, get this one. Because you've got the three different curves. Like, I only have this ruler. And then the straight edge. And that is enough to get started for sure. Okay? All right, I'm gonna pull this off. I want you guys to be able to see. Oh, I gotta go up and down again. Hang on, I already started my curve. Let me bring this back down to where I can just stitch into the batting because I wanna be able to show you guys a couple of places on this quilt where I use straight line quilting. Now, some of you are going, wait, you're doing switchbacks and then you ran into the batting. That will largely get covered by binding. So the idea with the way I'm doing these switchbacks is that they will look like straight line quilting by the time I'm done. Okay, I'm gonna attempt to scoochie y'all back. And I don't, I'm gonna hope you can see me. I won't know until my video actually catches up with itself. Let's move my slim line. Now, and I hope you guys saw how that slim line was positioned. I keep it below my eye level, uh, but shining down under on my work. Right, so sometimes it's real flat, sometimes it's at an angle. I just kind of move it around according to what feels most natural, um, but always below eye level and definitely a lifesaver in quilting. <coughs> there is a link to buy it on Amazon at the top of this week's blog post, Sherry. So if you click that first link in the caption of the video, it's right at the top in that little, there's a little strip of Amazon ads. And that is the fastest way to get it. Thank you, thank you guys. Okay, let's give you guys a nice up close and personal tour here so you guys can see these. And hopefully you can see the texture really well. So I've done part of a side. Oh yeah. These are about a half an inch apart. And then if I flip this over, you can actually see on the back too. Hey Sue, how are you darling? Can see on the back so on the back you can really see the difference that a ruler makes right let me show you if i 
flip down and show you these guys. So these are switchbacks I was quilting yesterday in the background of those flying geese. And they're pretty good because they were, um, it's a small enough area. But you can see that there, you know, there's some little wobbles in there, a little bit of unevenness. And you can imagine if there's a little bit of wobbling and unevenness showing up, even just at this tiny scale, how much more so it would be showing up on something like a four inch border, right? But by using that ruler, I can get a nice, smooth, um, really quite even switchback, okay? Lost your sojo, oh Sue. Hang out around here, we'll help you find it, okay? All right, other things that I did that involved straight line quilting on this quilt. I used switchbacks as well. Oh, let me show you those flying geese on the front side. Hopefully you'll be able to see at least some of the stitching. Okay. And then I also use, now I use my walking foot in the center here, but you could do it with a ruler. And that is these echo lines, which there's a picture of this in the, today's blog. So you may not be able to see it real well, but I basically use straight line quilting with my free motion um, to create a geometric effect if I wanna be echoing a, blog, a block shape, like echoing the piecing or emphasizing the piecing to push the background back um, or to deal with, you know, any imperfections, wavy borders, or just a nice, I just think this is such a crisp finish on a quilt to have a nice straight line in the board. Like this is just one of my favorite things to do in borders because it just looks so clean at the edges of your quilt, right? But here in the center, hey Bryce, yes you do. So here in the center, there's this big old star, which again, you'll find better pictures on the blog. Um, but I used my walking foot to echo the outside of the star, right, for the points, and then continue those lines. Okay, sorry guys, I gotta put it up against me to be able to see it. Um, and then I continued the lines down into the center. And it's a nice contrast with these ribbon candy and the feather that I put in the middle, okay? I would love to do a ruler class um, I don't have enough of it developed yet to offer it in person yet, Sue, but I would love to do that. I gotta, gotta work on my ruler work a little bit more first and probably do an online version before I could do an in-person version. We'll see. I'll keep you posted. I, trust me, I, you know, I'll be letting you guys know all the things. Call those organic stitching or creative art sewing. I love it. That's okay, Sue. I am teaching um, total sidebar. I'm teaching down at sewingmachine.com um, down in Atlanta near the Botanical Gardens in July. That's intro to free motion quilting again, which I know that you've already taken, but it's going to be um, a juki class. So you'll have an opportunity to try out all the lovely jukis, which I'm super excited about. So just sidebar. <laughs> all right. Any last questions, guys, before we wrap up for the day? This has been so fun. Thank you so much. Uh, for the opportunity to demo this for you. I know this is something y'all have been asking for. And so I'm really excited that it fit into summer stash busting. Which, speaking of, Sue, I would love to see you there. That would make me super happy, just for the record. Registration might already be open. I don't know yet. We were talking about it earlier this week. So if it's not open yet, it'll be open soon. Yeah. Let me make sure that I know what we're doing next week so I can give you guys a heads up. Next week, we're talking about quilting plans for negative space, which is very exciting. Um, I'm going to be working on quilting Lanterns of Hope using some crazy negative space excitement. Uh, so I have some work to do on that, and I'm excited to share it with you about basically how to um, completely ignore the seam lines on your quilt and superimpose this layer of negative space excitement on top of it. Or if you have a lot of negative space in a quilt, how to make that really visually interesting as part of your finished product, okay? So that's what we're doing next week. But before next week, I will see you Saturday night. Remember, we moved um, social hour. So social hour will not be tomorrow. It will be Saturday night inside the Quilting Rockstars group at 8 p.m. Eastern, okay? So I will see you guys then. I'm so delighted that you joined me today. And um, yeah, happy sewing. And remember, your whip number ones for the finish along are due Saturday by midnight, okay? So when you go to bed Saturday night, if that's after. For example, if you're on West Coast time, it's midnight West Coast time, right? It's have to be done by the time I get up Sunday morning because trust me, I'm not going to be staying up till all hours of the night, but I'm do, making them do Saturday night so that we can work on them during a uh, social hour together, if you so desire. 
My hope is that this puppy will be D4 done by then. I'm hoping that I will be on the long arm and doing a little bit, little long arm ride for you guys Saturday night. Fingers crossed that I get that done. Okay, I'm gonna stop rambling. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this ruler demonstration. Do go check out the blog post and make sure that if you think of any questions related to domestic machine quilting, that you drop them down in the comments to be your entry for our lovely giveaway sponsored by Make Modern. Thanks guys.